Good morning, brothers and sisters. We're going to continue on with the movie of God. We're going to go back, look at cell 14 and jump on into 15. Hope y'all paying attention. I hope y'all are paying attention. This ain't me. This is what God, this is God's words, not mine. I'm just repeating them, showing them, and commenting. I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in some other way as a thief and a robber. The man who goes in through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow someone else. Instead, they will run away from such a person because they do not know his voice. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it back. This is what my father has commanded me to do. How long are you going to keep us in suspense? Tell us the plain truth. Are you the Messiah? Well, we learned he's a shepherd. The people that trust the shepherd follow his voice, words. They don't run to another. They do not run to another. Do you understand? And the Lord told Jesus, you got the right to lay your life down and you got the right to pick it back up. So apparently the Lord raised himself. He's God. And the people don't listen. They refuse to listen. He's told them for three and a half years and they still don't listen. Just like people today, they don't listen. They follow another. Many people came to him. John performed no miracles, they said. But everything he said about this man was true. These people know he's true. Everything that was spoken about him is true. You know, many, many, many are believing and following him. First belief, then obedience. Y'all just ignore obedience. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. Teacher, just a short time ago, the people there wanted to stone you. And are you planning to go back? A day has 12 hours, doesn't it? So those who walk in broad daylight do not stumble, for they see the light of this world. But if they walk during the night, they stumble because they have no light. Another contradiction from Saul. Oh, well, that's nothing. That, that, that's just, I don't mean nothing. Don't mean nothing? The Lord just told a parable. But you stumble at night. And here is Saul. Oh, yeah, we can walk at night. We ain't going to stumble. Well, we're fine. Well, we see where your shepherd is. You follow your shepherd in the dark. That's a contradiction. Oh, but that's just a small one. Yeah, contradicting God's no big deal, is it? It's what's wrong with the church today, and that's why I despise the church. People put their faith in man, and when man contradicts God, oh, that's just minuscule. God's silly. He didn't know. It's all on you, though. We got to do it constantly. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they die. And those who live and believe in me will never die. Again, Satan believes. He trembles in fear. Demons tremble in fear. They believe. Obedience. O-B-D-ence. Look that word up. I know. I know. Y'all never heard it forward. Take a little bit of time. But you might become unlawless heathens. Yes, Lord. I do believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. That's what he's been trying to tell them. Just believe who I say I am. But y'all take the word of a man that was in the desert. That's right. You don't trust the thing God says. God said he wouldn't be in the desert. Saul said he saw him in the desert. 
Saul's right. Huh? Saul's telling the truth. Jesus, he didn't know what he was saying. You make me sick, people. You make me sick. Lord, please keep my flesh down. Y'all can't give God nothing. If he says something, and Saul of Tarsus says something that contradicts it, oh, well, Saul's right. Enjoy hell. That's all I can say. You're following a liar and a thief. Hadn't you been paying attention to what God's been saying? No, that's right, you haven't. Because you hate anything about God. I ain't, I ain't praising Saul. That's why. Jesus looked up. I thank you, Father, that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me. But I say this for the sake of the people here. So that they will believe that you sent me. After he had said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He came out. He made a man walk from the grave. I can hear it now. So did Saul. He raised the person from the dead. Thus, everything I've been saying about you people, you don't love God. You don't love God. You can't be obedient. You want to be Alistair Crowley's, do as thou wilt, and think that God has to accept you because you believe. Satan believes. Does this getting through this freaking rock up here on top of your shoulders? You think you're so special? God will forego his word for you? Keep thinking that. I advise against it. But keep thinking that. Many of the people who had come to visit Mary saw what Jesus did. And they believed in him. But some of them returned to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. So the Pharisees and the chief priests met with the council and said, what shall we do? Look at all the miracles this man is performing. If we let him go on in this way, everyone will believe in him. And the Roman authorities will take action and destroy our temple and our nation. Do you hear what Saul said? They got to stop him one way or another. They cannot have this man going around telling the truth, saving people, taking their glory, their money, their lifestyle. They can't have that. No, they got to stop him any way possible. One of them, named Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said, What fools you are! Don't you realize that it is better for you to have let one man die for the people instead of having the whole nation destroyed? Actually, he did not say this of his own accord. Rather, as he was high priest that year, he was prophesying that Jesus was going to die for the Jewish people, and not only for them, but also to bring together into one body all the scattered people of God. They trying to get rid of him. They can't stand him. They can't stand the light. Because they'll eat up with the devil. Their own self-glorification. Their own lust, their own needs. Their own desires. But you people think Saul of Tarsus is a prince. Oh, he was a Pharisee, but he changed. He said he changed. So you're going to ignore what God said. Beware of the Pharisees, the leaven of the Pharisees. They will lie to you. 
Oh, but Saul's not. He's telling us the truth. The Lord said he's a liar. Well, the Lord's a liar. Saul's telling us the truth. That right there is the modern day church. And you are the church. You are the church. You hate God. You despise God. Don't tell me that. Because God warned you. God warned every single one of you. And what do you do? You don't heed his warning. And you go flock to the very same person he warned you about. Are you stupid? From that day on, the Jewish authorities made plans to kill Jesus. So Jesus did not travel openly in Judea, but left and went to a place near the desert to a town named Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. The time for the Passover festival was near, and many people went up from the country to Jerusalem to perform the ritual of purification before the festival. They were looking for Jesus, and as they gathered in the temple, they asked one another, what do you think? Surely he will not come to the festival, will he? The chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where Jesus was, he must report it so that they could arrest him. Near the desert. And this ain't after his ascension anyway. But they're trying to kill. And you're going to sit there and tell me. Try to get me to believe. Saul of Tarsus had nothing to do with persecuting Jesus. Saul of Tarsus had nothing to do with the Pharisees mob attack on Jesus. Saul of Tarsus was leading the mob attack people. I mean, the... the if things don't convince you, God's own word, you don't love God. Well, that's your interpretation. I ain't interpreting nothing. What God says is how it's been spoke out here. A two-year-old with brain damage could understand them, but adults can't. Adults cannot understand God. That's why he wants people to come to him as children. Because you adults are too prideful in your ways. You think you know everything. You think you know the Messiah. You think his name is Saul of Tarsus. Yes, you do. Because Jesus spoke. He was sent from God. But yet you people say, we got to follow Saul. And you still won't see it. You're going to get mad over this. Over every video against Saul, y'all get mad about that. I'm promoting Jesus, but you're going to get mad about me not promoting Saul. That ain't going to sink in two years. It's not. It's not in you to worship God. You got to worship the world and the lust of your flesh and your desires and your wants. That rings true more than God. Saul of Tarsus can contradict God and you don't care. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus too because on his account many Jews were rejecting them and believing in Jesus. Your savior, Saul of Tarsus, he's going cold-blooded murder Lazarus. Oh yeah, he was brought back from the dead. Didn't Saul say everybody destined to die once? <laughs> your savior is trying to commit cold-blooded murder against another person. But that's who y'all place on that placard in the church. You jerk Jesus down off a cross and you threw Saul of Tarsus up in his place. I'm telling you people, y'all disgust me. <laughs> 